back. Joining us is our good friend, uh, former Michigan Congressman Pete Hoekstra. Hello, sir. How are you? Hey, Steve. I am just uh, I'm doing fine. Thank you. Well, it's, uh, good. I'm glad you are. I got some questions for you before we get okay. to, to health care. Of course, today, uh, ex-Speaker uh, of the House Tom Foley, who served in Congress for 30 years, uh, passed away at the age of uh, 84, complications from a stroke. Of course, uh, he was uh, a Democrat. He was uh, a speaker from, I believe, uh, 1990 through 19 to the beginning of 1995. Um, and so that means, uh, I believe, you, you served under his speakership, uh, correct? I did. I served with Speaker Foley for uh, for two years, my first term. Yeah, uh, I guess uh, you were there from 92 um, to, to that 2011. What were your impressions? Because, see, I, I have, look, I, I don't know the man. I have, I'm not here to badmouth the man. I'm just interested to see uh, if the media... You know, naturally, the legacy of Gingrich, you know, hopefully 100 years from now, uh, when they read his obituary, will be, you know, and the government shutdown. And, of course, uh, Boehner, uh, his legacy in 100 years will be, when they read his obituary, the government shutdown. And, of course, uh, Speaker Foley uh, shut down the government uh, along with, I might add, George Mitchell, the, uh, the majority leader of the, uh, of the Senate, um, and it was George H.W. Bush. This was in 1990. It lasted three days. And uh, it was uh, over Bush's refusal to sign a, con- a, con- a CR into law unless it was paired with a deficit reduction plan. So uh, the two Democratic uh, leaders in the House and Senate shut the government. My point being that, you know, probably no one will mention this in, in his obituary because he was a Democrat. That's right. Uh, I mean, uh, Speaker Foley, you know, back in those days, the uh, Speakers of the other party did not communicate with freshmen uh, of the uh, of the other party. Right, so you didn't have much interaction with him. I, I had I had very very little interaction. Uh, he probably never even recognized me as a member of Congress. Uh, doesn't mean that he wasn't a gentleman, right? Uh, right. And those types of things. I mean, he was the old style, uh, you know, the old style politician, and uh, you know, I, I'm sure he was a. Uh, a gracious man, uh, you know, the person that I would know that would be the closest to uh, a kind of Speaker Foley type would be uh, current Congressman John Dingell, who has served in the House for 56 years, 58 years. Uh, John is a very gracious man. Uh, he and I totally disagree on politics, uh, on policy, but a very gracious man and a, a distinguished member of Congress. And uh, I, I mean that sincerely, not uh, as what you typically hear on the House floor, you know, when they say my friend from Georgia, and it's kind of like, what do you mean your friend? Yeah. You, know, you guys don't <laughs> like each other at all. Uh, but, uh, you know, John Dingell, Speaker Foley, uh, they're the old style uh, politicians. They are, they are gentlemen. And, you know, interesting, he never served a single day in the minority, and uh, he was ousted by uh, George Nethercutt. By 4,000 yeah. votes, and that's how his, uh, his uh, House career uh, ended. So very, very interesting. Okay, um, let, let's move on to this Obamacare disaster. Um, the rollout, you know, I, I, you know what, you, you know, first of all, I want to ask you about how the how leadership you believe has handled the aftermath of this uh, capitulation. Again, I, I just don't understand why today McConnell or yesterday McConnell said, oh, we'll never shut down the government again. We've learned our lesson. And Boehner said, we fought the good fight and we lost. Again, why don't they turn it around and put it on Obama and say we caved, but we caved because we weren't willing to put the nation through chaos, literally, uh, the way Obama was over some Something very minute and very small, like like uh, you know the medical device tax, or or just ending subsidies for congressional staffers. Where this president was willing to do that, we wouldn't let it happen to the American people. Is that so difficult? Is that so ingenious? Is that so complicated? Instead of oh, we'll never do this again. We learned our lesson. I don't get it, Congressman. No, I don't either. I mean, I watched uh, 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 Senator Manchin on TV the other uh, the other morning, the day after government or the day that government opened. Uh, it was a very positive message talking about, hey, we need to get together and da da da, and you know, get some things done. And uh, it was a very, very positive message. And it's kind of like, oh, okay, you know, he's a Democrat. Uh, I then heard one of my former colleagues in the House uh, on get on uh, immediately after words, and oh, this is a terrible thing, and da da, you know, that's a terrible. We uh, Republicans caved, we capitulated, we we should never do this again. And it's kind of like, you know what? I'd rather. I'd rather listen to Manchin, the Democrat talk, than my Republicans. And, uh, you know, this is the opportunity for uh, McConnell, for all, you know, Boehner and the Republicans to come out and say, 
you know, yeah, we did win on this. And we're really, really disappointed because we think that this is bad for the Amer- American uh, economy. We think it's bad for the American people. It's bad for America. Here's what we need. You know, we're trying to address the problems of, of you know, the of, of America's mounting debt. We want to make sure that they've got quality health care. We want to make sure that, you know, we've got a tax system that's going to encourage people to take risk and to be and to be entrepreneurs and grow this economy. And this is what we stand for uh, rather than going on the defense. We've got to put a positive message and a positive spin out there as to what we're trying to get done or we will lose yeah. again. I, it is so frustrating. All right, we don't have a whole lot of time, so I want to ask yeah. you about a couple of more things. First, uh, in your f- capacity as the former House Intelligence uh, Committee Chair, um, uh, there's a report out there today that uh, Al-Qaeda, from, uh, from the Washington Free Beacon, Al-Qaeda-aligned groups may already have access to biological pathogens and, uh, and, uh, and biological uh, weaponized agents uh, in Syria. Couple that with the man that Barack Obama has nominated today to be the head of Homeland and security, uh, which is um, uh, 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 Jay Johnson, who, um, you know, was uh, uh, a $33,000 campaign contributor to the 08 Obama campaign, um, served in the Defense Department, yeah, as a lawyer, uh, but wasn't even in government right now. He pulled him back in out of retirement, basically. And what, what, where's the qualification? This is the most qualified man in the country to run Homeland Security? Yeah, I, I'll give you two things. Uh, first, on uh, you know, is it possible that uh, Al Qaeda affiliated groups have biological uh, weapons or have access to it? I think the answer is absolutely yes. Uh, chaos is uh, is reigning in Syria. Uh, we are very, very confident that Syria had, you know, uh, at least the building blocks for biological weapons uh, and those types of things. Uh, is it possible that Al Qaeda has gained control or Al Qaeda affiliated groups have gained control of some of those sites? Yes. Um, the set, do they know how to use them and all of that? I don't know, but I think they can probably figure it out. Right. Uh, the second thing is, uh, you know, I've always given presidents pretty great, uh, pretty significant leeway on appointees. Uh, it's our responsibility. Uh, now, this is going to be have to be a confirmable position. And remember, I served in the House, so I didn't have to confirm these right. folks. Right. Um, but I've always pretty much given uh, presidents a significant amount of leeway on their appointments. It's our job to uh, to hold. Uh, presidents accountable for the decisions that they make and give them the team that they want. Now, clearly, if this person is not qualified, uh, you know, then he, uh, it's the responsibility of, of the Senate not to, uh, not to approve him, not to confirm him, and ask the president for a better choice. I don't know enough background about this. Right. Uh, you know, so... All right. Well, yeah. fa- fa- fair enough. Um, it, 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 this is unfair to you, but in 30 seconds, describe the rollout of this disaster. <laughs> it's an, Well, I mean, when you get Nancy Pelosi saying this process and this website better improve and they better, it better improve very, very quickly, uh, you know that, uh, you know, she's seeing this thing collapse and any hope that she has of becoming speaker again is, is going along uh, is going down the drain with Obamacare. How about Sebelia? Should she be fired? Uh, I think you can make a very – she's responsible for the rollout. Uh, yep. Somebody needs to be fired, and uh, it's not, it wouldn't be a bad idea to start with her. Gotcha. Congressman, always a pleasure. We'll speak to you next week. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank right. you. Congressman Pete Hoekstra, when we come back, Dr. David Samadhi, to get the flu shot or not to get the flu shot on the Steve Malsberg Show, Newsmax TV and Radio.